After the failure of the massive Mule V-12 prototype in the late 1960s that still stands as the largest helicopter ever built, Soviet engineers at the OKB-329 Design Bureau at Mule Moscow Helicopter Plant began preparations to develop a new heavy-lift helicopter. Codenamed Izdelia 90 and later designated MI-26, this Cold War-era unmatched vehicle redeemed its predecessor and surpassed all expectations, becoming the largest helicopter in the world to actually go into production. Though designed primarily for military operations, it would see a fruitful career in civilian roles, from transport to emergency containment, and would therefore branch into over a dozen specialized variants, the first of which was rushed into service immediately after the Chernobyl disaster. However, the legendary helicopter would be best remembered for the odd feats that it would carry out, such as carrying a 20,000-year-old mammal in a 1,300-kilometer trek within Russia, or another one involving saving American assets. Big idea. Following the disappointing results of the Mule V-12 prototype, Soviet engineers set out to succeed with another ambitious undertaking, the Mule Mi-26 helicopter. A key requirement for the vehicle was that its empty weight needed to be less than half its maximum takeoff weight. Besides hopefully redeeming the Mule V-12, Mi-26 would replace the aging Mi-6 in both military and civilian roles. Notably, the Mi-26 had twice the cabin space and payload of its predecessor, which used to be the largest and fastest production helicopter in the world. The Mi-26's primary use would be to transport military equipment to remote locations, like the 13-ton amphibious armored personnel carriers and mobile ballistic missiles. Hence, it was provided with an eight-bladed main rotor, the first of its kind. The most powerful helicopter in the world also required twin fireproof titanium Latarev D136 series turboshafts of 11,400 shaft horsepower each, and its engines were placed atop the fuselage abaft of the flight deck. Constant rotor was maintained due to the synchronization of outputs between both engines, but one could compensate for the other in case of failure to complete a task. Moreover, its main gearbox was unique. Although it was relatively light, at barely over 8,000 pounds, it could absorb 14,700 kilowatts. Such a feat was accomplished by a non-planetary split-torque design with quill shafts for torque equalization. In fact, the VR-26 transmission was custom-designed by the Mule Design Bureau, as their regular supplier was not able to design such a specific gearbox. In addition, the crew had an excellent vision field inside the cockpit, as the cabin's position was set well forward in the design, and its short, rounded nose provided an enviable vision out of the cockpit as well. The helicopter was an impressive 131 feet 4 inches long and 26 feet 9 inches tall, while its main rotor's diameter spread across 105 feet while paired to a five-bladed tail rotor on the starboard side of its vertical fin. Remarkably, its maximum takeoff weight was 123,459 pounds, and the helicopter could reach 1,200 miles, while its service ceiling was 15,100 feet. MI-26's complement included five crew members, but its capacity sufficed for 90 troops or 60 stretchers. Unmatched across the globe, MI-26 flew for the first time in mid-December of 1977. The first production example was then rolled out six years later, and prototype V-29 fulfilled its destiny. In 1981, it was showcased at the bi-yearly Paris Air Show, and its development was completed two years later. Then, in 1985, MI-26 finally entered service with the Soviet Union, kicking off an illustrious career that would encompass routine military and civilian roles, as well as some of the most strange operations ever accomplished by any aircraft in the world. Operational Service MI-26 was first considered a good fit for the Buran Space Vehicle Program. Theoretically, the helicopter could bundle lift components for the reusable spacecraft, but as later test flights with a mock-up showed, it was a highly risky and impractical maneuver. Still, the helicopter's first real-world mission came about soon after it entered service, and it was a dire one. After the Chernobyl nuclear accident of 1986, a specialized version, dubbed the Mi-26S, was hastily developed to support the containment efforts. No less than 30 examples were deployed for radiation measurements, and they had to execute precision drops of insulating material to cover the infamous No. 4 reactor. To achieve their objective, the models were equipped with a deactivating liquid tank and an underbelly spraying apparatus. Given the nature of the undertaking, the Mi-26S operated in the immediate proximity of the reactor. Hence, its cabin was protected with a filter system and screens to protect the crew, especially during deliveries of construction materials to the most contaminated areas. However, the most bizarre task the Mi-26 would carry out in its career was yet to come. 
In late 1999, scientists in northern Russia required a 25-ton block of frozen soil to be transported from the Siberian tundra to a lab in Katanga, Tamir. The enormous lump contained a valuable cargo inside, a 23,000-year-old preserved woolly mammoth. The Yarkov mammoth was found two years earlier in Siberia by a nine-year-old boy who gave it its name. Nevertheless, carrying the so-called Mammoth Cube was such a gargantuan enterprise that after the mission was successfully completed, the MI-26 had to be returned to the factory to check for airframe and rotor warping caused by potential overstressing. Another unlikely exploit, though one executed more discreetly, happened in early 2002. When the U.S. Army launched Operation Anaconda in Afghanistan against Al-Qaeda and the Taliban, two invaluable Chinook helicopters became stranded in a mountain. One was rendered irreparable, but the other could be recovered. However, even without its rotors, fuel, and non-essential equipment, the aircraft weighed about 26,000 pounds. In comparison, the U.S. Sikorsky could only carry 20,000 pounds at a height of 8,500 feet, which was where the Chinook was stuck. The U.S. Army was then forced to ask for the help of the Russians, but they did so indirectly. The arrangement was made through Skylink Aviation in Toronto, which contacted a Russian company, Sports Flight, and leased a civilian version of the MI-26 called Heavycopter. For only $300,000, the Russian helicopter recovered the Chinook and brought it back to safety. Half a year later, another American helicopter hard-landed north of the Bagram Air Base, but the helicopters came to the rescue once again. However, a regrettable tragedy took place later that year when an overloaded MI-26 was downed by Chechen separatists and crashed onto a minefield, taking the lives of 127 people. It was the most significant loss of life in the history of helicopter aviation. Still, the model is better known for its humanitarian and disaster relief roles. After the 8.0 Sichuan earthquake in China in mid-2008, a natural phenomenon called Quake Lakes threatened the lives of the survivors. Landslides blocked many rivers, and significant amounts of water pooled behind the dams. Those dams would eventually give in to the pressure and risk the lives of the people downstream. An MI-26, operated by the Chinese Civil Aviation Service, then transported tractors to remove the heavy earth in the inaccessible Tangzhishan Mountain. MI-26s have assisted in accidents or after malfunctions on several other occasions, carrying valuable vehicles back to safety. Its versatility would lead the MI-26 to branch into a multitude of specialized variants that have redefined what a helicopter's role is. Specialization the Cold War-era helicopter, designated Halo by NATO, is still the most powerful and largest in the world, and has evolved into at least 13 variants. However, it has mainly taken part in humanitarian relief roles due to its supply delivery capabilities. As early as 1985, an advanced version, known as MI-26A, was enhanced with a PNK-90 flight navigation system for automated approach and decline. Another upgraded version, the MI-26M, features a flight navigation system, D-127 turboshaft engines, electronic flight instrumentation, and aerodynamic rotor blades. In 1997, a commercial cargo freight transport version, known as the MI-26T, was showcased at the Moscow Air Show, and upgraded with advanced avionics five years later. Then came the MI-26MS, which was designated as a medical evacuation vehicle, equipped with an intensive care section, an ambulance space, and a laboratory. Other variants range from an anti-submarine warfare model, the MI-26 NEFM, fitted with a search radar, to a passenger transport vehicle with airliner-type seats, a center aisle, bathroom, kitchen, and cloakroom. The MI-26 PK, a flying crane helicopter, stemmed from the MI-26P radio relayed version. And other than the MI-26S disaster response model that operated in Chernobyl, the MI-26TP is a specialized firefighting aircraft capable of distributing over 17,000 liters of water from a single squat bucket. Furthermore, the MI-26TS emerged from the MI-26T as an export version for South Korea. And then there's the MI-26TZ fuel tanker model and the MI-27, which was designed as an airborne command post. The legendary MI-26 is still in service to this day, and its use is spread across the world. Its main operators, aside from Russia, include the Indian and Algerian air forces. But the long list of countries that have it among its ranks includes China, Kazakhstan, Mexico, North Korea, Peru, and Venezuela, among many others. Also, civilian versions of the model can be found in countries like Belgium. As of 2015, there were 316 examples built, but provided that the fabled helicopter keeps executing such an effective role in as many and varied missions in the most remote and dangerous corners of the globe, it is safe to assume there will be many more to come in the future. 
Thank you for watching my video. Please let us know your thoughts in the comments below and hit the like button and the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Also, don't forget to subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels for more military content from the annals of history. Stay tuned.